I've avoided making a fitness journey video for a long time. The main reason is that I've always told myself that I'm not healthy enough, fit enough, my routines aren't good enough, my habits, my diet, the way I look is not good enough to share what I'm doing. But today I'm gonna do it anyway because I have learned so much this year, made so many mistakes, experienced so many failures. And even though I'm still not perfect and I still have a long way to go with my health and I have so many goals I've yet to reach, I hope that in sharing my 2023 journey with you, someone out there can avoid my mistakes. If you're new here, hi, my name is Cadence and I'm so happy to have you on my channel. Channel, I share and test evidence-based health and fitness tools so we can reach our goals together. Let's start with a 2023 health and fitness recap. The start of 2023 was pretty rough for me in terms of my health and fitness. I remember starting the new year with a lot of motivation like many of us do, and I had goals primarily just to lose fat by basically whatever means necessary. Rather than doing some research, creating an action plan, all of the stuff that I have now since learned better and know that you need to do to be successful, I just said, oh, I'll throw in a couple of HIIT workouts and eat healthier. I had no plan and so I saw no results for the first three months of the year even though I felt like I was working hard. I was just trying to be healthier and fitter. My birthday is the first week of March and some of my amazing friends from college came out to visit me and we had a ton of fun that weekend. We had a lot of alcohol. We didn't get very much sleep. I do not regret a minute of it, but I remember the day after they left, I felt like garbage and I was like, okay, this is it. I really need to get it together. I weighed myself, which was probably a mistake because likely most of this was water retention or just weight from the alcohol, salt, and lack of hydration over the weekend. But I weighed in at the heaviest I have ever seen and that felt like a little bit of a wake up call for me. So that's when I came up with the concept of the 90 day cut challenge, which if you're familiar with my channel, maybe you saw a couple of those videos. I spent a few weeks doing tons of research on science-based tools for fat loss. I filmed my cut intro video and I got started. A couple weeks into my cut, I got sick. I made a video about science-based tools for your immune system. And after that, I did not make a single cut update for three whole months. I did film several cut challenge updates, but every time I went to edit them, I just felt like such a fraud. I felt like I was giving tips or advice or sharing my experience and I hadn't even lost any fat yet. I didn't feel like I was in a good place with my own health and felt like such an imposter for trying to share anything to try to help other people. I was like, I need to get my own life and my own self under control before I can try to help others. Cause I just wasn't practicing what I was preaching. I would say all of these things, turn off the camera and I was really struggling. So I feel like I was trying to keep up this appearance that I was doing well. And I really just wanted to share the message that you can lose fat in a sustainable, healthy, balanced way while still enjoying your life. I was really tough on myself and really down about myself and spent most of my time feeling disappointed and ashamed in the fact that I hadn't made much progress. One thing I find really challenging about this channel is finding the right balance of being honest and transparent, but also being a good role model. And I really just didn't want to share how I was feeling because I didn't want anyone else to think that they should feel that way too. Like I didn't want to complain about how I looked or how I was self-conscious or how I was ashamed because I didn't want anyone else to think, oh, should I then be ashamed? If I remember correctly, my final cut update, I leaned a lot more on the sunshine and roses side of things than things really were. I was still struggling by that point and I felt like I hadn't made a ton of progress. Even though I could see in my progress photos, I looked different. I kind of convinced myself it was mostly just bloating or lighting or, you know, I was having a good day when I took my after photos or whatever. And I just didn't really feel different. I felt like I was still struggling so much to eat more whole foods, make healthier choices, get my protein in, my workouts felt really difficult and I felt really tired all the time. I was definitely feeling better about myself than I felt at the beginning of the challenge, but I would start to see what I thought was progress and then be like, no, that's not really progress. And I saw the number on the scale was going down a little, which I try not to use the scale exclusively because it doesn't tell us whether we are retaining water, losing fat, losing muscle, gaining fat, gaining muscle, etc. But I like to use it as a part of the story along with measurements, progress photos, and other forms of tracking progress. Even though some of my metrics were looking good, I was still very suspicious. In July, I put in my notice to leave my job, which was really difficult for me because I love my team. And even though the work and role itself just wasn't for me anymore, it was really hard for me to leave this group of people that are so amazing. If anyone's interested in hearing about that experience and that decision, I'm happy to share, but it's just kind of different than what my channel is normally about, which is why I haven't really spoken about it much. The rest of the summer was a whirlwind as I tried to prep my team for me leaving and do as much knowledge transfer as I could. I was trying to post more videos on YouTube, but really struggling to be consistent 
consistent because I just felt so exhausted. I think it was about June, end of May, maybe June, that I started my journey to become a runner. And that was another big disappointment. I did Natasha Ocean's hybrid program and I did a full review talking about the program, my experience, the journey. If you're interested, I'll link that down below, but I'll briefly summarize. It was kind of a complete failure. I don't want to say complete failure because I try to look at things through the lens of nothing is a failure as long as you learn from your mistakes. Basically though, I put in a lot of effort and I tried to do everything right and I saw a decrease in my Apple Watch measured VO2 max after three months of hard work and I didn't feel like I was any better at running. I felt just as slow. My timed mile wasn't very different. So by September, I felt like I had taken a couple steps backwards. I felt like I had put on a little bit of fat. My metrics I was using had shown that. I didn't feel like I was any better of a runner so I felt like I'd been wasting my time a little bit and I felt like I had slipped back into some of the food habits that weren't really helping me to reach my goals. So I was pretty down on myself by this point. But the good news is October and November of this year was when everything really clicked for me. I started consistently weighing in at, I think as of today, I'm 10 pounds under on the scale. What I started in back in the spring, I wanna be clear, the scale does not tell the whole story. I have no way of knowing if that is all fat. It could be water weight. I have a lot of fluctuations day to day. I try to take my weight every day and take the average across time. I also take progress photos and measurements. All of those things come together though, and I am seeing improvements, hopefully because I am continuing to lift intensely and because I am prioritizing protein, I haven't lost any muscle. There's no way of knowing unless you get a body scan or something like that. There are even moments now where, dare I say, I'm proud of the way I look and I see myself in the mirror and I'm like, I look good, which is pretty crazy to say because at the beginning of the year, I was really insecure and really struggling. I feel like I've finally started to get into a groove with my supplements, my protein, my hydration, my sleep, all of these components that I ignored for so long, I think I'm finally locked in and I'm not perfect, but for the most part, the majority of the time, I'm taking care of these things for my baseline health and that has made a huge difference. And I just finally feel a sense of peace and I know I'm on the right track and if I keep taking these small steps forward, I will be able to eventually reach my goal, which is right now just to become the fittest and healthiest I have ever been in my life. I wanna be a weapon in the gym. I wanna like be able to do burpees, pull-ups, push-ups. I wanna be able to take a Pilates class with my friend. I wanna be able to take spin classes. I wanna be able to go on hikes. I just wanna be a well-rounded fit person. I wanna be strong, but I also really wanna work on cardio fitness. And that was a big goal of mine throughout the year. The truth is for a lot of the year, I was hiding the goal of fat loss behind the cardio fitness goal. But after my experience in the summer and just really getting a sense of how difficult it is for me to run because I have neglected cardio for so long and opted to just lift weights, it made it more of a priority for me. And I'm really excited to continue working on it. But I do feel like since I ended Natasha's program and I switched my cardio approach to include more high intensity interval training rather than doing all of my training in that low to moderate intensity zone like I was on her program, adding in a little bit of hit and maintaining that low intensity just at a higher volume so in her program, I would end up doing about 45 minutes per week of that low to moderate intensity level of training. Now I am doing between 120 and 180 minutes per week. So just really cranking that up and adding in the hit. I feel like my cardio abilities have improved so much. So throughout 2023, I learned a ton. Firstly, a ton of information. I listened to so many podcasts, read so many research papers, and watched so many videos about science-based tools for health. And I have been trialing and testing those tools, figuring out how they fit into my life. And it has been so much fun. But Perhaps more importantly, I learned a lot from my own experience actually applying these tools, which is something the science doesn't really teach us about in, in a lot of cases. So here's what I learned in 2023. I'm saving my favorite lesson to the end. So before you click off this video, skip to that section. It's really important and I want everyone to hear it. Lesson one do hard things to do more hard things. I had an epiphany about a past version of myself this year. It felt like I suddenly awoke from a dream and I realized I didn't recognize who I was. In high school and college, I was so disciplined, perhaps at times too disciplined, but that's a conversation for a different day. Whether it was school, dance, exercise, eating well, anything I wanted, I would go after it and get it done. And I was relentless at achieving my goals. I had a 4.0 GPA in both high school and college. I never got anything less than an A. In high school, I took, I think it was 11 or 12, of AP classes and I passed every exam. I graduated with the highest GPA in my degree and my college at university. And I also was one of a small group of valedictorians at my high school. I don't say this to brag about how I peaked in high school and college, but this year I feel like I woke up from a dream and realized that I am not that person anymore. And that is really heartbreaking. But the exciting thing is, is now I've started working towards becoming that person again. I know what I'm capable of and I know that I can get back there if I put in the work. So I share this in case you have had a similar experience where you 
you look back on a past version of yourself, wonder what the secret sauce was. I'm gonna tell you my hypothesis based on the research I've done. Your discipline in one thing is essentially your discipline in all things. There's an area of our brain that has more activity and can get physically larger the more hard things we do. The way to do hard things is to do more hard things. Lesson two, progress is not linear. Everyone tells you that progress isn't linear, but I don't think people talk about how heartbreaking it is to actually experience those ups and downs. I started questioning if I was doing things right, just being lazy, why can't I stick to my diet? I felt so ashamed and embarrassed. So what if you rubbed the bottle and I, the genie, came out and I was going to grant you one wish. Let's say your wish was a health and fitness goal. Like, for example, let's say fat loss because that's what I was focused on during this year. I say, yes, I'll grant you that wish, but under one condition. For the first six months, you are going to fluctuate up, down, and sideways. You're gonna feel great one day. You're gonna feel self-conscious the next. You're gonna be bloated. Your weight on the scale will go up and down. Your measurements will change. But after 12 months, you will have your dream body, your dream diet, fitness routine. You'll feel strong, capable, powerful. You will look the best you've ever looked and everything will be great. Would you say yes? Because I would definitely say yes to that. Even though that first six months thing doesn't sound very fun, I would still say yes to it because if I knew that I could get to the finish line, that would be incredible. This is real life. We can't guarantee that you're gonna have your dream body or your dream lifestyle or your dream health and fitness or anything like that. But so many of us, myself included, get discouraged, disappointed, wonder if they should quit, wonder if they're doing things wrong because of these fluctuations throughout the journey. I'm not a genie, so I can't guarantee you that you'll have your dream life one day, but I can tell you one thing. Giving up will not get you any closer. As long as you are playing by the rules and you have a well-researched action plan, give it time. That's something I wish I'd really locked in because I paid so much attention to these tiny fluctuations at the beginning and I was constantly questioning if I was doing things wrong, I would make all these changes when really I just needed to focus on taking those small steps every day. But as long as you're playing by the rules, just give it time. Lesson three, you can have it all, but not all at once. After learning so much in my initial research for my 90 day cut challenge about how restriction can make things more difficult and balance is good and sustainable fat loss means going slowly, I was all in on the balanced approach, but Unfortunately, I was so balanced that I basically just didn't cut anything out. And I think that's a big part of the reason why I didn't see results or at least didn't see consistent results in my first six-ish months of trying to lose fat. Once I really locked in during the fall and made some sacrifices, that's when I kind of stopped yo-yoing and started to see more consistent results. One thing to keep in mind is general trends. So I'm not talking about yo-yoing like day to day. So many factors besides fat loss can impact the way we look, how much we weigh or how our measurements look. So I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about general trends over time I was yo-yoing. The changes I made were pretty small, but I did have to make some changes to start seeing results. Previously, I was eating out two to four times a week, and every time I ate out, I would say, this is a treat, I can have whatever I want. That's fine if it really is a once in a while treat, but I was doing it so much that I think it was really impacting my progress. When I was tired, I would make pizzas for dinner or things that were just ultra processed. I would get a sugary coffee on a daily basis. I would go out a couple times a week to get boba with my boyfriend. I would have dessert every night. I wouldn't stick to my protein supplementation and I just wasn't getting a lot of whole foods in. So I decided that my one thing was going to be coffees and I do still occasionally splurge in these other areas, but I decided to prioritize something that really brings me joy. A lot of people would suggest not having a 300 calorie coffee when you're trying to lose fat, but for me, I'm so much more willing to cut out a lot of other foods in my diet to make room for that higher calorie coffee because I love it so much. The trick is I had to actually make sacrifices. I couldn't just have everything all at once. At the end of the day, fat loss is a thermodynamics problem. Calories in and calories out, although calories are a little more complicated than they may seem. I have a full video on that. If you're interested, I'll link it down below. It's still a calories game. Whether you count them or not, it's all happening in the background <laughs> and you need to burn more than you consume if you want to lose fat. So lesson four, I'm begging you to to stop ignoring the basics. I was so bad about this. I would sleep five or six hours a night and then wake up and have a terrible workout and be like, wow, you're so lazy. Why didn't you try harder at your workout? It's like, I was tired. And I was taking all of these supplements, trying all these hyper optimizations and none of them were really working. And the reason is that I was ignoring my baseline health. Here's the thing. Most of the stuff that we need to improve our health is actually free, but we are so lazy. We would way rather pay for all of these fancy supplements and things that we don't actually need than just do the work. <laughs> and I'm guilty of this too, so I'm right there with you. Eating whole foods, drinking enough water, getting enough electrolytes, which could be as simple as putting a pinch of salt into your water, getting enough sleep and getting in some movement on a daily basis. These were the things that were so transformative for me, especially in the second half of the year. 
And once I got these changes down, that's when I started to really see a difference with my body and my fat loss journey. Truly, I believe these things are the only real fix and you can put band-aids on using these supplements or hyper-optimized protocols, but if you're not taking care of your baseline, it's really difficult to see a difference. Lesson five, you know what to do. Over the first six months of my fat loss journey, I went through this cycle where I would get really frustrated with myself and talk to my boyfriend and be like, what am I doing wrong? Just be honest with me. Like, why am I not seeing results or why am I not seeing progress? Why am I so up and down? Why is this so difficult? And he would kindly give me advice. It would kind of go in one ear and out the other and I would just go right back to what I was doing before. Once I carved out a little bit of time and space to actually think and critically assess what I was doing, the answers came to me so easily. And all the things I've talked about so far in this video and will cover in the rest of the video, it was just these really simple basic things like sleeping enough, not making every meal out a treat meal, especially if I'm going out multiple times a week, things like that. I feel like a lot of the time we actually know what we need to do and yet we go searching externally, we pull our friends and family, we're Googling it, we're YouTubing it, we're doing all this research. And by the way, research can be a procrastination tool. I am very familiar with that myself. If you're struggling with something right now, whether it's health or something else, something that has really helped me in those situations is trying to carve out some time, whether you just go out on a walk in silence and think it over, journaling, meditating, anything that you can do to give yourself some space, the answers came to me so easily, both for health questions like this one, as well as so many other things, when I made the space. If you're stuck, give it a try. Lesson six, protein is probably the answer. So we need protein to build and maintain muscle, right? But protein is also really satiating. So when we eat it, we feel a lot fuller compared to the other macronutrients. It's hard to realize how satiating protein really is until you start experimenting. I was so inconsistent with my protein shakes over the first six months of the year. In the last few months though, I've started really prioritizing it and I feel so much fuller throughout the day and because of that, I'm able to make healthier choices that are more aligned with my goals. And it's kind of just bled into everything else in my life. I feel like my energy levels are a little bit more consistent throughout the day rather than letting myself get starving and then maybe pick foods that aren't as aligned with my goals. I'm just a lot more locked in. One thing I struggled with a lot at the beginning was just feeling so hungry all the time because obviously going from eating ultra processed foods to like fruits and vegetables, I just felt a little bit less satisfied. And I started to just feel so hungry all the time because I was eating mostly carbs. It was as simple as that. I just needed to have more protein. Lesson seven, you actually do need zone two cardio. Zone two cardio is all the rage this year. And there's a good reason why I resisted it for so long thinking, why would I go to the gym and then just walk on the treadmill? Like I should be absolutely destroying myself in the gym every single time. Alas. <laughs> It is so effective. So on my rest and recovery days, I've been going to the gym and just doing a slow little incline walk, getting my heart rate up into that intensity zone two. Intensity zone two is the pace at which you can have a conversation. You don't wanna be having a conversation. You'd rather not be talking, but you can carry a conversation. It's made a huge difference in how I feel and also I think is one of the main contributors to my success with fat loss towards the end of the year. Lesson eight, you kind of have to eat healthy at restaurants and parties. We talked about this a little bit earlier, but I realized the treat yourself mentality was actually really holding me back from reaching my goals. And it was frustrating because I felt like I was working so hard for most of the week. I would go out and have coffee and croissants with my boyfriend a couple times a week, go to brunch, go on dates with him, go to my friend's house, go out to dinner with them, go to parties, whatever. The key for me was starting to make healthier choices even when I am out with friends friends, family, on dates, whatever. I say healthier, not healthy for a reason because I'm not gonna bring like a meal prep container to the restaurant. I'm, I'm not that intense about it. I've been able to see really great results with just picking a little bit healthier of an option. So for example, going for a grain bowl or an avocado toast rather than a waffle or pancake for me, opting for something with a little bit more fruits and vegetables compared to something that is really high in sugar, ultra processed, that's been working for me. Getting honest with myself about the, it's just one meal thing. Like being realistic about how many times I'm actually doing that in the week or month was really helpful for me. Lesson nine getting focused in your workouts makes a huge difference. I set up a focus setting on my phone so that whenever I started a workout on my Apple Watch, it automatically muted my notifications and locked me out of all of my apps except for my fitness related apps and my Spotify, of course. When I was locked out of TikTok and Instagram during my workouts, suddenly my rest periods got so much more reasonable. It's so funny how that works. If you're time restricted in your workouts in any way, or if you just wanna make the time you're already spending at the gym more effective, I highly recommend. It's so simple, but it made a huge difference for me, put your phone on do not disturb 
even airplane mode if you're feeling crazy. And it helps to really stay focused. Lesson 10, above all, love yourself. I listened to a book this year called You Are a Badass and it really locked in a concept that I had been struggling with for a lot of the year. At the end of every chapter, she reminds you to love yourself. To be honest, I didn't love myself through most of this year. I wasn't totally transparent about that because I wanted to be a good role model and I didn't want to justify that kind of thinking or encourage anyone to feel that way about themselves. I spent a lot of time shaming myself for letting myself go or getting to the point where I even felt like I needed to lose fat, not working hard enough, not putting in enough effort, not being productive enough, or not sticking to my goals. I thought that if I loved myself the way that I was, I wouldn't have as much motivation to go out and make positive change. So instead, I trudged onward, hating myself every day. But the truth is, loving myself is actually what set me free. There is so much power in doing things from a place of loving yourself and caring for yourself than a place of hating yourself. My motivation is 10 times stronger now that I'm doing it from a place of love than a place of hate. Do I wanna look good? Yeah, who doesn't wanna look good? And probably always will be a part of my goals and the reason I'm doing things. But I can truly tell you it's no longer the primary reason that I work out and it feels so good. In my cut video, I started to share this concept, but maybe you can tell watching it, I didn't fully believe it yet. I was saying it because it felt like the right thing to say and I wanted to do right by those watching, but I did not really believe it. I wanted to, but I didn't yet. It took me a lot of time and a lot of effort to actually start to believe that and to actually start to feel it. And it's been incredibly freeing. If you take one thing away from this video, I hope it's that. Thank you all so, so much for your love and support this year. It is my favorite thing to get to know you all and chat with you in the comments. I'd love to hear in the comments down below what you learned this year so that we can all learn from each other and grow. Next year is going to be our best year yet. So if you want to tag along for the ride, make sure to subscribe. Don't subscribe unless you want to become the fittest, healthiest, and best version of yourself because I will drag every single one of you watching to become the best version of yourselves next year. If you found this video helpful, the best way to support my channel is give this video a like and hit subscribe if you'd like to see more from me. And I will see you next time.